Aloha guys, welcome back to my channel, Mermaid Nina here. Well, I'm back with the last park of my new series. Who knows what I'm talking about? That's right, I have already filmed this for Magic Kingdom, Epcot, and Hollywood Studios. So tonight, we're talking about Animal Kingdom. So for those of you who don't know what I'm doing, I get a lot of questions from you guys about the park, specifically about the maps or just wanting more general info. So even though I already have like park itinerary videos for both the general family and for just kids, I have tons of vlogs and tips and tricks out there. A lot of you seem to just really wanna know what's in the park, right? What's on the map? So in this series, I'm actually gonna just walk you through the map. I'm gonna talk about all the rides. You're gonna get a ride by ride guide, including important information like height requirements. We're gonna talk about most dining locations. And of course, I will mention which ones are my favorite. And we're gonna talk about shopping. We're basically just gonna go step by step through the map talking about the ins and outs. So for those of you who wanna know what's in the park, that is what we're doing tonight. So make sure you guys get out those pens and papers and start taking notes. And if you guys want actual footage of what I'm talking about, make sure you guys check out my Animal Kingdom vlog videos where I actually show you the shows and the eats and the rides and all that good stuff. Sound good? All right, I have to just stop right here and mention this. I get a lot of people who tell me they don't wanna to go to Animal Kingdom. Why? Because they think it's just a zoo. And by the way, they can go to their zoo at home. I am here to tell you 100% Animal Kingdom is not a zoo. And if it is a zoo-like, it is not like any other zoo you have ever been to before in your life. Animal Kingdom 100% has animals. But I'll be honest and say that the majority of the time when I go to Animal Kingdom, I don't even look at the animals. I do not take time out to walk the animal paths and check out the animals because I'm all there for the rides and the shows and the eats. There is one ride that does involve animals and it's amazing, of course, we're gonna get to it. But for those of you who skip Animal Kingdom because you think it's just a zoo, it's not. So you guys ready? Let's get to it. So like I said, we're gonna break it down per the map. Now, according to the map, there are six different lands and areas within the Animal Kingdom Park. So we're gonna take it land by land so it's easy for you guys to understand. The other thing to know about Animal Kingdom is it's set up a lot like Magic Kingdom, right? You know how Magic Kingdom has the castle in the center and it's like a hub. Well, Animal Kingdom is the same way. The center, of course, is the Tree of Life, the very big tree covered in handcrafted animals. It's gorgeous, by the way, if you've never taken time to look at it. So that big tree, the Tree of Life, is the center focus of Animal Kingdom Park, and you can pretty much go a full circle around the trees. So if we go ahead and start from the front of the park, right, as you enter into Animal Kingdom, that is gonna be your first land or area, and that is called the Oasis. Now the Oasis is a pretty small area. It's pretty much just a central focus area before the Tree of Life. We're not even at the Tree of Life yet. All we did was enter the park and boom, you are in the Oasis. There aren't any rides in the Oasis area, but there are some animals to notate, right? So we've got some birds known as the Spoonbill. We've got ant eaters and the Babarosa. They have this like tropical gardens area. As soon as you scan into Animal Kingdom and if you walk straight, the first thing you're gonna see is a bunch of birdies. You're gonna see uh, normal ducks, ducks that we might see every day. They like to swim and hang out with the other birdies and crane-like birds in that area. And then you have two options. You can go left or you can go right to enter into the park. Either way, you're in the oasis. We tend to go left and that's where you're gonna hit the ant eaters and so on. If you keep going, you're gonna pass over a little bridge and that's gonna take you into the tree of life, okay? Also in the Oasis area is the Rainforest Cafe. Now don't get this confused because there are two Rainforest Cafes on property. Why? I don't know. Disney, why? Why do you have two Rainforest Cafes on property? I've never understood this my entire life. Anyway, one of them is at Animal Kingdom and yes, to go to the one at Animal Kingdom, you do need a park pass, right? You do, you do need tickets. 
but it's inside the park and it's kind of towards the exit of the park. Animal Kingdom, you enter and you exit at the same point. So it's kind of around the corner towards the exit. Just know that it's there. It is considered a chain restaurant, but it is that burger and fries. The cool thing about Rainforest Cafe is they have these animatronic safari and tropical garden figures that kind of make noise and wake up and it's really cool everything between gorillas and elephants and giant butterflies they all of a sudden wake up and they get real loud and there's like thunderstorms in there anyway it's a fun interactive place to have breakfast lunch or dinner over at animal kingdom and then the last thing to note here of the oasis is the Garden Gates Gifts. This is just a tiny, teeny tiny little gift shop over there at the entrance slash exit. They are known for having some Disney pins there. But yeah, that's the Oasis. It's really tiny, mostly animals, mostly it's a way for them to describe that entrance exit area. Next up, we have Discovery Island. Now this is the area surrounding the Tree of Life. So once you, you know, you entered the park, you saw the oasis area, you went left. There's a little bridge you walk over. Underneath the bridge, watch out, because there could be cavalcades that go by. Cavalcades in the water, which are known as flotillas. That's right. So you could see, you know, some characters floating down underneath the bridge. In fact, at any point around Animal Kingdom, you see water. Be on the lookout for not only sounds, but your sight, because there could be a flotilla going by. They go through the entire waterways. There's characters on them. There's waving and singing, and yes. So anyway, be aware of that. But as soon as you walk over that little bridge area, you are in the Discovery Island area. And of course, straight in front of you, right in front, is the Tree of life it is like i said gorgeous and beautiful and yes this is the focal point you want for your family photo first thing i want to notate here is there are two very specific characters i like to meet uh, they weren't on the map so i'm just adding this extra tips and tricks you ready this is the perfect place to meet kevin yeah kevin from up she likes to walk around and squawk and squeak all over the Discovery Island area. If you keep going around the corner a little bit, you do have a chance to meet Moana as well, at least for now. I am suspicious Moana is gonna move over to Epcot, but for right now, she's at Animal Kingdom. So yes, if headed to the park, go check out Moana. But let's get into what's also in this area. First things, we have some animals to notate. So we've got some otters the cotton top tamarins. Now, the really exciting thing about these beautiful tamarins is they just had some rare set of twins. That's right, so if you go check out the cotton top tamarins, you may, ch you may see the two new babies that have been recently born at Animal Kingdom. Also, they've got catfish, yeah, in case you wanna check out some catfish. They've got a tortoise. Now, the tortoise is in the same area as uh, the tamarins. Then you've got lemurs, flamingos, some kangaroos, and what's not noted here are vultures. There are a set of vultures pretty much right underneath the Tree of Life. For rides and attractions, let's hop to it, right? First thing is wilderness explorers. Now, this isn't a ride or attraction. This is a free activity that anyone can do. It's very kid-oriented, but it doesn't have to be just for kids. When you go towards uh, the Tree of Life, to the right-hand side, there's a little booth. This is the spot you, where you would go and pick up your handbook to become a wilderness explorer. Yes, inspired by Russell from Up. There's a bunch of activities in this booklet and certain points throughout the park that you would stop, talk to a fellow wilderness explorer, you complete your badge on your booklet, and then you become officially a wilderness explorer. It's absolutely a fun activity for all, but like I said, it's a good way to keep the kids kind of entertained throughout the park. My kids absolutely love doing this. As soon as they see a wilderness explorer stand, they're like, mom, mom, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go. I'm like, okay, go, do your thing. And they're off and running to go get another badge. But yes, you would get your handbook starting at that uh, location there to the right side. Also in this area is it's tough to be a bug. OMG, if you have watched any of my videos, you will know that this is one thing I hate. 
and would love for Disney to uh, revamp, but nonetheless, It's Tough to Be a Bug is a 3D show. Now, I am warning you right now, if you are a little skittish, if you have kiddos who are a little skittish, especially afraid of bugs, this is one to skip. It's dark, it's 3D, and there is a chance creepy crawlies are gonna get all over you and it's gonna freak you out. So just, you got my heads up there. But for those of you who like a decent laugh, who find this kind of stuff funny, yes, it's tough to be a bug, could be a fun show for you. But it's definitely not something on the like must do list. It's something we like to do, A, when I wanna freak out my daughter, she hates this show, or B, when we're trying to kill time, we'll check out it's, you know, it's tough to be a bug, but definitely never, ever, ever on my must do list. Next thing is the Discovery Island Trails. Now this is the area surrounding the Tree of Life where you can kind of walk and see some animals, but most importantly, you can see all the carvings on the Tree of Life. I forget how many animals are actually on there, but artists carved so many hundreds of animals on this tree and they're absolutely amazing. I actually have a video where I kind of walked around the tree of life and showed you some of those animals. So yes, that's another good way to kind of kill some time while you're waiting for your Genie Plus or your dining reservation, so to speak, is to go check out the tree of life. Next thing up is the Adventures Outpost. Now guess what you get to do here, guys? You get to meet Mick and Min dressed up in safari gear. Yeah, absolutely love this opportunity to meet Mickey and Minnie dressed up in something different than their usual polka dot outfit, right? This is them in safari gear. So yes, that is also what's at Discovery Island. Now there's some eats in this area. First, we have eight Spoons Cafe. This is a cart kiosk thing over there that's pretty much known for mac and cheese pretzels and pulled pork jelly donut sandwich. Now, as a vegan, this is not something I've ever had, but it's gotta be on the menu for a reason. So for those of you who have eaten it, is it good? Let me know in the comments. To me, it sounds so biz bizarre. Pulled pork jelly donut sandwich. But next up, we have the feeding ground. The feeding ground is near the It's a Bug's Life show, and that's just a popcorn stand. So if you want to refresh your popcorn bucket, yep, you can do that right in front of the show. Next, we have its Flame Tree Barbecue. Now, I have featured this uh, quick service location in my videos before. This is one of my family's favorite quick service locations. It is indeed barbecue. But our best part about it is not just the food, although the food is good, is if you wind yourself down to the very edge of where the seating is, you, see, you sit outside, it's not indoors, it's outside, but you can sit along the waterways. And remember what I said about the waterways? Yep, you're basically getting dinner and a show because while you're eating your barbecue, you get to watch flotillas go by. It is 100% amazing. It's a great way to entertain those kiddos and feed them at the same time. And you know what? Not just kiddos like watching a flotilla. So yes, we love Flame Tree Barbecue. Also in that area is Isle of Java. You can only guess what that is. It is a cart kiosk area, yes, featuring Geoffrey's Coffee. But I'm gonna notate this one here, guys. They have breakfast there. They have a breakfast sandwich for breakfast on the go. I can't tell you how many times people ask me, Nina, 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 where can I get breakfast in the theme park? Animal Kingdom has lots of breakfast on the go options. So the Isle of Java is one of them. They also have a Mickey pretzels there as well. Next we have is Tiffin's Restaurant. So those of you who are going next year on the meal plan, Tiffin's is a two credit meal. It is good food. It is nice food. It is semi fancy food. It's a great way if you're celebrating a birthday or an anniversary to go eat at Tiffin's. Tiffin's also has the Nomad Lounge. It is a lounge that features some of the simpler items of the Tiffin's restaurant and then obviously cocktails because it's a lounge. Next up is Pizza Fari. Yep, it's in the name guys, it's pizza. If you have a kiddo who is super picky and they're only wanting to eat pizza, Pizza Fari it is for you. It is a quick service location featuring pizza. Next up is Creature Comforts. Now, Creature Comforts is code for, wait for it, Starbucks. 
That's right, for those of you who need your Starbucks fix, me and my pink drink, uh, we head over to Creature Comforts quite frequently. A note, if you're going during popular time, they're gonna have a line, a line out the door and around the corner because everybody wants Starbucks. Now, what's directly next to Creature Comforts, I'm gonna mention it, it wasn't totally in the map, but I think it's important, is the Baby Care Center, also their first aid. Baby care centers are perfect for anyone with littles. You want a nurse, change a diaper, someone needs to take a nap. If you have an older kiddo who might have some sensory issues and you need to go to a quiet spot, yep, baby care center is the place for you, like I said, right next to Creature Comforts. Now, in this area, we're almost done with the Discovery Island area. They do have two shopping uh, places here. They have Island Mercantile, and they have the Discovery Trading Company. Now these are two larger gift shops. So if you're looking for gift shops to kind of go to at the beginning or the end of your day that's gonna have the majority of goodies in it, these are the two gift shops. They're on each side as you walk towards the Tree of Life. So one's on one side, one's on the other. Tree of Life is in the dead center. So sometimes I like to exit, walk through one shop, cross over, walk through the other shop, and then come back around before I exit. They're right there to a pretty decently sized gift shops for you. Now, this isn't necessarily the way I would do the park. I'm following what the map says. If I was going to do a park itinerary, I would probably follow one of my itinerary videos. So next up, we're going to go do Pandora, the world of Avatar. But like I'm trying to tell you, this isn't how I would go with the flow to do the park. I would probably skip some of this, head straight back, do the safari, and come back forward. I'm just following the map here of what the map tells me. So we're going to hit up Pandora, the world of Avatar. So this is basically you went forward. You're looking at the Tree of Life, waving hi to the vultures. You're going to turn left and you're gonna get right into Pandora. In fact, you know you're in Pandora because its sound changes. And you're just like, oh, what is that sweet, gentle sound? That is Pandora. And then all of a sudden you see these bright, weird looking plants. That's Pandora, <laughs> the world of Avatar. So yeah, there's some great things here in this area. And believe me, it's not just rides. They have some good food in Pandora. So first, of course, like I said, rides and attractions. There are no animals in Pandora. So just kind of notate that if you're specifically going to look for animals. Uh, but they have a Navi River Journey. Navi River Journey, I always compare it to like it's a small world. It's a simple boat ride. It's a simple boat ride that can be very calm and peaceful. And there's some gentle singing. In fact, it's so calm, I've fallen asleep on it before. Anyone else? Let me know in the comments. But 100% family friendly, kid, fa kid friendly, perfect for everyone. I will note that Navi River Journey, although a simple ride, a simple boat ride, you're not getting wet, is oddly popular. I'm not sure why it's so popular unless people thinking it's something more than it really, really is. So be careful here. The line can get long, like past 60, 60 minutes for Navi River Journey. So make sure if you have Genie Plus, you might want to Genie Plus this one. Next up is Avatar Flights of Passage. Now this is the big, big, big ride over at Animal Kingdom. If you are going to purchase an individual lightning lane, it's going to be a for this ride. Watch out, however, kiddos need to be at least 44 inches tall. Now this is a flight simulator ride, a 3D flight simulator ride. Um, there is a motion sickness warning, but it is thrill and it is crazy. And when it first came out, this was the kahuna of rides. This was like the creme de la creme. It was also the ride that was causing a lot of, you know, upset tummies. So just be careful here. Also, sadly, there is a warning on this ride. People of a certain shape or size may have difficulties riding in the ride vehicle. So they do have a ride vehicle at the front of the ride so you can test it out. The issue here is even though anyone can pretty much sit in it, they have to lock you in it, right? So you don't fall over. And the way it locks you in and pins you in to your legs and your back, some people just don't fit sadly enough. So make sure you test out that ride vehicle so you know. 
Um, for eats here, we've got two restaurants. Now, once one is Pongu Pongu. Now, this is a outside quick service. There is some seating um, at the other restaurant, but this is an outdoor thing. It is a quick service notated here. They have breakfast as well. For those of you looking for breakfast, you can absolutely come here. They're also known for snacks and specifically drinks. If you see anyone walking around Animal Kingdom, specifically in the Pandora area, with like this multi colorful bright tropical drink with boba balls in it. Yep, they got it here at Pongu Pongu. Also note here that Pongu Pongu is famous for pineapple cream cheese spring rolls. Yes, I remember when this location first came out, everyone was jumping for the, bon for the boba ball drink and for the pineapple cream cheese spring rolls. So just know that they also have cinnamon rolls there. Next up, actually right next to it, is Satuli canteen i may be saying that wrong this is an awesome restaurant for those of you who are looking for different no burgers and fries at this location uh, this is kind of a healthy location you get to design your own food bowl right so they have certain options you can pick from chicken beef whatever even a tofu option and then you get to select your base and your sauce so you pick your protein option and your own base and your own sauce and you make your own bowl. Yummy, 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 yummy. They have seating both indoors and out at this location. Now shopping here is right next to Pongu Pongu. Actually it goes gift shop, Pongu Pongu, set to canteen. All boom, 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 three in a row. Uh, that place is Wind Traders. Now Wind Traders is the gift shop that's gonna be the exit shop from uh, Flights of Passage. So when you go on Flights of Passage and you exit, you're actually exiting into this gift shop. Now this is the place to go if you want anything Avatar, anything Pandora, right? plush and t-shirts and other nature-like inspired things are at this location. Also, if you wanna get your custom made avatar doll based on your features, this is the place to go over at Wind Traders. Now, next up, we're in a whole new area. In fact, we're in my favorite area. And this area is known as Africa. It's also the place I go to first. So I will bypass all this other stuff and go straight to Africa, uh, you will find out why once I tell you what's in it. But yeah, so basically if we're following the map, we entered, we saw the tree of life, we went left, we went through Pandora, and we're gonna keep going around the tree of life. We're kind of in the back left corner. That is Africa. Now the animals to mention here are elephants, lions, giraffes, gorillas, hippos, monkeys, okapis, a tarantula, and goats. I'm just telling you what the map says, guys. By the way, most of these animals can be seen on one of the rides I'm about to mention. So for rides and attractions, first thing here is Festival of the Lion King. Now this is a show. This is a singing and dancing and get you excited show featuring, well, yep, the Lion King, it is family friendly. It is perfect for all. I 100% advise it. It is an excellent show. And they returned audience participations, especially for kiddos. So if your kiddo gets picked to help make some music within the Lion King show, make sure you guys get out your cameras. Uh, this show is 30 minutes long and like I said, highly recommended. Next thing up is Kilimanjaro Safaris. Now this is a 22 minute-ish, it can change. A safari around the savanna. This is where you're gonna see those elephants and lions and gorillas and hippos and blah, blah, blah is on the safari. This is our favorite ride in Animal Kingdom. In fact, we love it so much, we will ride it twice in one day, absolutely. Here's something you need to know. First, it is definitely family friendly, kid friendly. Everybody loves it. I have a warning. It's bouncy, very bouncy. You're in this like long Jeep thing and it's bouncing over things and oh my goodness. So if you are sensitive, serious back problems, you can't do much bouncing, perhaps you're pregnant, 
this might be something to consider to avoid. Um, but the nice thing about this is each time you're on the safari, it's different. It is not the same experience because those animals are free roaming. So one day you may see 20 giraffe, one day you might see two. Same thing with the hippos and the elephants and oh my goodness, absolutely love these. And because the animals are free roaming, you get to watch them sleep, eat, and if you're lucky, even poop. That's right, Nina said poop. So yes, do this once, do this twice, do it as many times as you want and explore the African safari. Next up is the Gorilla Falls Expedition Trail. Now this is at the exit of the safari. So you rode the safari, when you exit, if you go right, you can go to the Gorilla Falls Expedition Trail. Now this is just kind of a self-guided forest area where you can meet uh, gorillas, hippos, and birdies. If you know anything about me, Nina loves herself some birds. So yes, that's over at the Gorilla Falls. Next up is Rafiki's Planet Watch. Now I feature this a lot in my video, so make sure you guys check that out. Uh, this is an area kind of in the back side of the park. It is considered part of Africa. You do have to take the Wildlife Express train to this area. And yes, guys, that's a real train. If you love kiddos who love trains, make sure you get them on the Wildlife Express train. Now it's gonna stop you to an area known as the Conservation Station. Now this is an area where you can go hang out with some animal care experts. You can learn about feeding the animals. They even have a vet clinic in there where you can actually watch them doing some procedures and some general care stuff on actual animals that live here in Animal Kingdom. It's absolutely cool. In that area is also the animation experience, which is where you learn how to draw one of your favorite Disney animals. Also, they have the affection section, which is outside where you're gonna go and actually meet and touch and maybe even feed some actual animals. I'm talking about Nigerian dwarf goats, some sheep, some chickens. They change it often. But yes, that's all under Rafiki's Planet Watch. So we, you, we usually do that first thing because my kids love looking at the animals if they're getting some sort of procedure, some sort of general care. My kids can just sit there for an hours and watch those animals getting their uh, doctor visit on, right? So for eats here, and we're, we gotta go fast. So we've got a popcorn cart in this area that also includes some cinnamon glazed nuts, which are my favorite. Next we have is the Dawa Bar. That is a lounge area with drinks. This is just outside Tusker House, which we're gonna get to. Next is Tusker House. Tusker House is the character meal over at Animal Kingdom. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And this is a character meal with African-American inspired eats, right? And it features Donald Duck and friends. So Donald Duck and Daisy, usually also Mickey and Pluto, are gonna be in their like safari gear meeting guests inside this restaurant. Then we have a coffee shop and bakery. Now this place does also have breakfast on the go items, so know about that. Then we have the Tamu Tamu refreshment stand. And guess what's here, guys? Dole Whips, lots of different kinds of Dole Whips, including the kind with alcohol, right, with some rum. They also have breakfast on the go items and coffee. Next up is one of my favorites, the Harambi Market. I have featured this on my show quite a few times as well. The Harambi Market, I like to think of it as healthier eats. Again, not really burgers. They do have fries here. Uh, but the nice thing about Harambi Market, yes, the seating is outdoors, but if you sit towards the back, towards the fence, you can actually watch the Wildlife Express train go by. So we will order food, go get a table at the very, very back, sit there and watch the train go by. Note at this location, there isn't a vast amount of tables, so you do kind of have to hunt down for your tables and kind of hope that you get them. It can kind of be first come, first serve for an actual table. Then we have the Harambi Fruit Market. Now that is located just in front of Kilimanjaro Safaris. This has a lot of stuff in it actually, guys. This is hot dogs, pretzels, corn, yep, I said corn, fruit, churros, 
and drinks. So yes, a lot of good things here, especially if you're headed to or from the safari and you're getting a little hungry, this is a great place to kind of pick up some eats. They do have two stores in this area. One is a marketplace. This is near the bathrooms, kind of across again from the safaris. And this is just your general gift shop, uh, but it features some safari flair in there and some fun trinkets. Attached to this gift shop is Zuri's Sweet Shop. Now back in the day, they used to have bakery goods that looked like animal poop. It was actually really, really cool. Giraffe poop and elephant poop, but it was a bakery good. They got rid of it, unfortunately. But this is a place to get your Werther's Originals treats, some candy, some bakery items, candied apples, fudge, and some frozen drinks. Again, all of this that I just mentioned in Africa. Next up is Asia. Now, if you're in Africa and you keep going, Asia's pretty much directly behind the tree of life. So you go Africa and you keep going around the back side of the tree, you're in Asia. It's kind of the back and also the back right of the park if that helps you guys out. Uh, the animals to notate here are tigers, bats, which includes one of my favorites, the fruit bat, the gibbons, OMG, I love to sit and watch the gibbons. I can get myself some popcorn and just sit there and watch those silly gibbons all day long. Next is a kimono dragon. Have you ever seen a kimono dragon? Yep, you can at Animal Kingdom. Lots more birdies and monkeys in Asia. But the rides and attractions in this area, first we have feathered friends in flight. Now this is an animal show, a 25 minute long animal show where animal trainers have been working really, really hard uh, with some birdies and they do some fun uh, shows for you guys. They are trained to do things, but you never know what the birds are gonna do. I do have a note here for anyone who's allergic to peanuts. I will be honest and say that a lot of these trainers do treat the birds with peanuts. So if that's something that worries you, just know that in advance. But yes, feathered friends in flight. Next we have is the Maharaja Jungle Trek. Now this is another one of those areas where you will see the animals, right? It's a self-guided tour of monkeys, tigers, again those birdies, bats, the kimono dragon. Now this uh, specific trek is very long. I remember going through it thinking, are we done yet? Like seriously, there's more animals to this trek? This is a pretty decently long one. Again, the animal treks are a good way to kill time uh, if you're waiting for a dining reservation or those Genie Plus pass reservations to begin. Next up is Cali River Rapids. Now Cali River Rapids is a water ride, a potential, you're gonna get super duper soaked water ride. It uh, does require kiddos to be 38 inches tall. It is considered family friendly, but again, motion sickness here potentially, because you're on a raft and you're dodging rapids and you can go up, down, and there could be a drop. And just a heads up if that's something that concerns you. And again, you could get wet really wet <laughs> so heads up on that one next up is expedition everest if you're looking for a coaster this is the coaster to go to over at animal kingdom it does require kiddos to be at least 44 inches tall heads up on this coaster guys it goes backwards i'm going to give you a little heads up you're going to go up 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 really slowly and then you're going to reach the end and the track is missing and then all of a sudden you fly up backwards. So yeah, just note that in advance. But it is a speeding kind of train off course situation ride. Now the eats here, uh, we got Mr. Kamal's. I always pronounce it wrong. This is a cart stand area with chicken dumplings and seasoned French fries. Then we have the Warung, again, could be saying it wrong, Outpost, they are known for drinks. Then we have Drink Walla. Guess what? Drinks, yep. But they also have my favorite candied nuts. And of course, Mickey's Premium Ice Cream Bar can be found at Drink Walla. Then we have the Yak and Yeti Restaurant. Now this is another chain restaurant, uh, but it's Asian inspired eats, right? So that Kung Pao chicken type 
uh, Asian cuisine there with rice and noodles and all that good stuff. I'll let you know, guys, it's pretty yummy in there. So if you're looking again for something different outside of the burgers and the fries and the pizza, Yak and Yeti could be a good option for you. And for those of you who didn't get a reservation or you want to do a, a quick on the go situation, a Yak and Yeti also has the local food cafe. Now, this is a walk up quick service type situation where you can get a certain minor portion of the menu that's at the restaurant here at the grab and go quick service. They also have a Joffe's coffee in this area. So again, more coffee. They have an ice cream truck. So yes, ice cream, a waffle cone floats and the famous Yeti Sunday. Then they have a popcorn stand. They have Trek snacks. You're gonna get popcorn, a Mickey pretzel, frozen treats here, also coffee. And then they also have the Thirsty River Bar. Yep, more drinks. I'm actually, when I was doing this, I did not realize how many places served drinks at Animal Kingdom. Yeah, I think everyone goes to Epcot for drinks. Yeah, Animal Kingdom has its fair share of alcoholic beverages as well. And the shopping here to notate is another Mandala gift shop. Uh, this is local apparel, housewares, and gifts. If you're looking for something a little bit more eclectic, uh, this is the good uh, place for you. They also have the Zerka, probably saying this wrong, Zong Bazaar. It's a bazaar shop. And this is going to have general park merchandise, teas, plush, etc. This might be a good place to get a plush Yeti. Do they have plush Yetis? I think they did, or they used to. This is where you would go for that. Now, we're in our final area for those of you who have been counting. If we keep going, we're in, we're in Asia, we're behind the you know Tree of Life, and you keep going to the right, we're going to hit... Dino Land USA. Now remember when we were at the entrance and I said you could go right or you could go left? Remember when I said that? I had us go left because that's what the map is doing. If you went right, you would hit Dino Land USA. This is another one of our favorite areas. Um, they have some animals to notate here and I find it really funny. So you guys let me know if you find this funny. Two animals are listed, yeah, on the map. I'm not making it up, is the American Crocodile, okay, and then it lists a Trianosaurus Rex. Yes, it lists a T-Rex in the map. This is kind of funny to me because we were headed to Dino Land USA, it's in one of my vlogs, and I heard this mother coming the opposite direction and she was mad, mad as a hornet, complaining because there was no T-Rex. <laughs> and I remember thinking, really, she thought there was gonna be a T-Rex? I know why she was complaining now, guys. It says in the map, animals is a T-Rex. Um, I will let you know that the T-Rex you can indeed meet at Animal Kingdom is a skeleton. But yes, it is in the map, which I find pretty comical. But let's go straight to our rides and attractions here. First, we have the Boneyard. If you are looking for a place to set the kids free and let them get out all their energy, yep, the Boneyard is an open air played area for kiddos that kind of looks like a dinosaur dig site. So if you need to set those kiddos free, Yep, the Boneyard is for you. Next up is the Fossil Fun Games. Now I always give parents a heads up on this because this is like a carnival games area that costs money. It is not free. And I think games right now are in the $6 range. They might even be $6.50 per game. That is per kiddo per game. And it's not just for kiddos, adults can play too. Um, unfortunately, you are not guaranteed to win. So you could spend a couple of $6 to win uh, your prize. And what are the prizes? They are amazing, guys. Uh, we have featured the Carnival Games a few times on my channel. Yeah, the prize are adorable plush. Look at how cute Mickey is. He actually says the Dino Institute on him. You can get dinosaurs. Yeah, these are so cute. They are well-made. Plush. They are not like cheap carnival plush where they're filled with beans. This is nice plush. This is this is nice. So the kids and the husband have uh, played a few games and won me some of the plush in a few of the different times we were at Animal Kingdom. So again, six dollars plus per plush if you win on the first game. Um, our favorite game is of course basketball. We're tall. 
and it's easy for us to score a hoop. But yes, so that is also in Animal Kingdom, again in Dino Land, USA. Next up is the Finding Nemo, the Big Blue and Beyond. Now I find this odd that they stick this in Dino Land, USA. First, Nemo and dinosaurs, not connected. And it's not really, when you pass through the big sign that says Dino Land, USA, Nemo isn't in there. Nemo is at the exit kind of well, it's kind of to the right left-ish. You can see it. There's a path that takes you to Nemo. So I'm not sure why Nemo is considered Dinoland USA, but just note that it is. Uh, technically, it's in there. Uh, Nemo is a show, a fabulous show. I actually love the shows at Animal Kingdom. You want to sit, get some air conditioning, listen to some great singing, and watch a show. Animal Kingdom is the place for you. It's a 25-minute long show, family-friendly, singing. It's fun puppetry. You love Nemo? This is the place to be. And sadly, if this helps you out, this when my kids were little, little, this was a good place to take them to take a nap because it's air conditioning. And they're out all day running around at the boneyard. You go to then watch Nemo and they pass out in your arms and take a decent sized nap. So yes, <laughs> heads up on Nemo there. The next thing up is the Tricera Top Spin. Now this is in Dino Land USA. This is essentially Dumbo, but with a dinosaur, if you know what Dumbo is. It's just a gentle in a circle ride and it does kind of go up and down. You do get to control it and you're riding a Triceratop, but yes. I love this ride. I pretty much ride this ride every single time I'm at Animal Kingdom. It's in our vlog footage. In fact, I have a video just on Dino Land USA, so you can see uh, some of these things featured here. But yeah, Triceratops spin, family friendly, kid friendly, friendly for everybody. The last ride and attraction here in Animal Kingdom is Dinosaur. One word, caps, Dinosaur is gonna require kiddos to be at least 40 inches tall. Now, Dinosaur is a dark ride that can be scary, most definitely bumpy, because you're on this Jeep-like vehicle and it's bouncing and going crazy and you're kind of looking at dinosaurs in the dark and some of them kind of come out and almost feel like they're gonna get you. Absolutely awesome prehistoric tour of dinosaurs. Um, I will note for those of you who have been to Disneyland and have been lucky enough to ride the Indiana Jones ride, it's the exact same ride. Same vehicle, same ride, same everything, except instead of Indiana Jones, it's dinosaurs, yep, but yes, this is a great ride. My son loves this ride. He will beg and plead for me to get him a Genie Plus for this ride every single time, 100%. So for eats here, we got Restaurantosaurus, very difficult to say. It's restaurant mixed with Saurus, right? So dinosaur and restaurant put together, anyway. Long time ago, this actually used to be a McDonald's. There's a little trivia for you. Uh, but it is a quick service location. It's very much burgers and fries. You have a kiddo who just wants burgers and fries. Uh, this is the place to go. Next to this is Dino Bites. Dino Bites is um, ice cream. Yep, and then they have Trilo Bites, which is another kind of cart area. Uh, they feature chicken and chips, ice cream, churros, and other types of snacks. Then you have the corn evores, like carnivores, except it's corn. Yeah, Disney's so silly. This is a popcorn cart that's actually inside the fossil game area. So the same carnival game area where you're gonna win yourself a dinosaur. Yep, there's a popcorn cart in there. Corn evores, yeah. <laughs> cracks me up every time. And then there are two uh, shopping locations here at Dino Land USA. The first one is Chester and Hester's Dino Treasures. Now this is the bigger gift shop in the area. It's right across from the Fossil Game area. This is your general Disney gift shop type gift, sh uh, you know, store featuring dinosaur stuff, t-shirts, plush, other Disney merchandise is in this gift shop. The other one is the Dino Institute shop. Now this is another exit ride store. So when you exit dinosaur, you're gonna exit into this gift shop. And this is the place you wanna go to if you want dinosaur anything. Dinosaur candy, got dinosaur t-shirts, dinosaur plush. Um, one of my last videos, we had one of those dinosaurs on a stick and you could get the mouth to, yes. Anyway, so anything dinosaur, you can get at the Dino Institute shop. But that's it, guys. That is Animal Kingdom, uh, the full map right now. This is the current 
park map. So let me know what you guys think. Is this helpful? I realize this is the last one of the series. So if you're looking for Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Hollywood Studios, those are already out there on my channel. Animal Kingdom was the last one I did. But yeah, let me know if you enjoyed this series. I do have another series in my head that we are going to start up next. Hopefully you guys like that too. But please, if you can, share these videos with family and friends. If you find my channel useful and helpful, specifically these videos, please plop them on Facebook, Instagram, social media. Share them with anyone you know who is going to Disney World. I would love for these videos to help out more of our family and friends. But yeah, guys, this is it for my Follow the Park Map video series. Let me know what you think in the comments. As always, guys, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. If the subscribe button is red, please click it, turn it gray, hit the bell icon. Uh, for notifications, uh, like this video, and like I said, comment. It's the last of the series. Have you enjoyed the series? Are you looking forward to my next series? Yes, absolutely. And again, if you're looking for park itinerary videos, I already have them. Check my channel. I have them for the general family, kind of like my family. We've got mixed ages here. And then one designed just for the kiddos, kiddos who want to focus on characters and like little kid things. I have a whole itinerary planning videos for that. I have tips and tricks. I have videos of just vlogs of Animal Kingdom so you can actually see the things I'm talking about. But yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, mahalo for watching. Nina, out.